you just tuned in the program is um the forum and like you you've always you, you're acquainted to anytime on the forum we'll bring in personalities um to to look at issues that affect the church today on the program i'm i'm happy to tell you that i have um uh, senior evangelist uh Oluwa and he's the peculiar personality of the week we're looking into some of those issues that have been bothering your mind what happened as the the mandate that the Lord gave to our founder, SPG Ashofa, has it expired? Uh, God's mandate don't expire, especially when uh, it's specified for a mission. The mandate has not expired, but um, the time has changed and the, the, the direction is taking us change a little bit. Mankind. If we narrow it down to the Celestial Church of Christ, because okay. a lot of the social media, the satellite TV stations, you watch movies and, you know, when it has to deal with some fetish stuff, you see movies trying to to rope us into... Don't forget we're in the spotlight. And um, we are taking a new direction. People don't expect us to take this day. Because we are moving into evangelism and because don't forget that the rock of the church, which is a spiritual aspect. Okay. And now Paul was trying to share something to the Corinthians in uh, First Corinthians 12 when he was speaking about diverse gift, a different administration. Yeah. Now the gift exists, the administration differs. The gift exists, administration differs. Is that applicable now in the celestial church? Yes. Let's take a, let's for for starter, we're looking at a church that was founded through SBJ or Shofa. Right. With this acclamation that it was founded on the uh, 29th of 20 yeah, yeah. September, September yeah, sure. 1947. Yeah. And this single person came to to tell to report to his people. Mm -hmm. What the encounter he had, and the rest is history. Yes. I want to ask along the line, how did it go wrong? What happened? Um, was the mandate adulterated? Was it bastardized? What happened to the mandate? Every mandate, um, when we look down memory lane, we'll find out that there is no mandate that has not been bastardized. But the covenant remained. Now, along the line, a lot of things came into the fold that um, when we die in the fold, look at it, we, it's not too pleasing for us. Mandate, covenant. Where is the confluence? Now, this is the confluence. The, the mandate is go into the world and save soul. That's now, the, the mandate to SPG or Shepard. That's the mandate to care. Okay. Now the covenant is that witches and wizards will not overpower us. Okay. Go into the world, rescue people that are drowning. Yes. And you would not meet any uh, opposition. No. In the it, it's not as if you will not meet opposition, but you, you will not, win. You will win. Yeah. Okay. So along the line, the case of Abraham bringing Lot along. Exactly. Lot. Lot became a baggage became a baggage. Yeah. That is, are you saying that is the foundational problem? Uh, that that's one of the foundational problem. Okay. What, what would you how would you compare the past and the present? And now what existed in the past that has not existed in the present is that in the past there was the fear of the Lord. Now in the present it's not see I would say the fear of the Lord is limited within us. 
uh, is it an environmental influence, is it societal influence, or what What gave them the fear of God then that didn't give them the fear of God now? What happened? Now, what gave them the, the fear of the Lord then that didn't exist now was that then the prophet did their job as to what the Lord revealed unto them. Okay. Not looking back as to material gain. So people people stayed within the jurisdiction exactly. of their mandate. Exactly. What what now influenced uh, the turnaround? Material wealth influenced a lot of prophets and prophetess within the fold. Covetousness? Yes. Okay. Like what Paul was telling them. So um, they, they saw it as an avenue to enrich to, themselves. To amass wealth. Yeah. How has the celestial church you know, shaped you. Of what effect has the church been to your own life? Uh, because if you are assuming I'm not a celestial and, and okay. probably I'm a friend or a relative or someone you want to preach the fold to, it has to be from an example that is practical. Mm. How how has the church influenced you? The church has influenced me in uh, many ways. Firstly, in times of worship, the church has really influenced me in terms of worship, in terms of the fear of the Lord, in terms of knowing God the better. You see, um, there is no good thing that doesn't have its backside. Okay. Now, it's a, a shame that we've not been able to put our hearts together. It's, it, it, I, I hope you're listening out there. He said it, it's a shame that we've not been able to put our hearts together. Yeah. I mean, over the years. Yeah. Uh, whose fault? Because they're asking right now, whose fault? Is uh, it the fault of the congregation or the fault of the clergy? Almost every Sunday, one personality will mount the pulpit and preach. I believe it's all our fault. I will not limit it to the clergy. Because um, as a congregation, you can decide where you want to worship. When you find out that your clergy is not in line with what God demands from you, you can decide you don't want to go there. Is that why a lot of our, you know, youth, I mean, dumped the fold for other denominations? Yeah, I see. I see a lot of reasons why a lot of youth would dump the fold because. Um, when you come to the fold, you come to your church, and what you have been taught out there, what you know about Christ is not being represented at your fold. At your fold. But there is a, at a point, David said, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, right. let my right hand forget his skill. <laughs> is, is that not what, why things go wrong when people leave the fold because there's this general myth that if you used to be a celestial church worshiper or mm -hmm. something or you a member of the congregation and you dump the fold you go elsewhere things that, that are working will stop working for you is it that you automatically get into a spell or is it just a myth or is it because there's a covenant that you ought not to dump why because i see a lot of this youth being used up and being dumped even by the corresponding um, denomination. And now well, what it is with the youth is that the first thing you have to understand that there is no youth that has left this fold that wherever they get to they don't know they are coming from a Christian background. Now the first thing that attracts them to this fold as teenagers is that they come to church almost every day. Okay. So as a youth, they understand that coming to the house of the Lord is good. Now, when they begin to reason with age, now they understand right from left. Mm. Now, when they begin to read the scripture themselves, they understand that, listen, when we were young, you told us this in Sunday school, we should mm. not do, we should not do. But some of the things you told us in Sunday school is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. they get to the oh, reason. So age. you're saying practice? They are not practicing what they are preaching. Exactly. The the, the so-called mentors are not worthy of emulation. Exactly. Oh my God. So where they get to, and they see the motive, and Christ-like in them, mm. they participate well. 
Mm. And the, ask them, where are you from? And say, uh, unfortunately, I'm from so Why right? unfortunately? Now, why the, unfortunately? The word unfortunately will come because you have to understand that at the time the youth is living, is not pleasing to him. Mm. He has been frustrated passively or actively. Exactly. So he ends up, he ends up dumping his beloved foes. So for yeah. an unknown destination exactly that is already accepting him before he even gets yeah. there how do, the welfareism how do you, how would you rate welfareism in in celestial church and now you find a member who's been coming and you didn't see him come again and you don't even care whether he, what happened or whatsoever there's no follow-up on you know and jesus christ said a good shepherd will leave 99 sheep to search for the for one yeah, yeah. Now you have to understand that the roles of so many shepherds in this church is not assigned to them. Hmm. This is not the first time you. I'm sure you're hearing that if you've been a frequent uh, viewer. Each person keeps saying the same thing that a lot of people that are, that are involved in the running of the church are functioning outside the jurisdiction of their calling. Mm. What do you advise the two? Uh, Should there be a, a university where people will specialize, a celestial university that will give them maybe the final year to specialize on what they ought to be and warn them against being what they ought not to be? Uh, what if, would you suggest? If there is a celestial university, it's good. But we have to understand that celestial universities should not be limited to celestials only. We should start with a forum where we gather all the shepherds. We gather them to a learning, I wouldn't call it a college, probably a training exercise. And uh, in service training. In service training. Okay. Uh, whereby their role will be assigned unto them. You have to understand well, that. Well, they listen to that. Some will tell you, you didn't call me, it's the Holy Spirit that called me, so you have no right to tell me how to go about it. They will not listen. It's not as if they listen, they will not listen, but um, rather than having the blame, it's better to try. Will there be a, a, a body, a board that will excommunicate whomsoever does not do as it's stipulated? Will there be an authority like an institute that will regulate the activities of the shepherds? Do you advise that? I advise that, but um, with the present dispensation, I don't see that working because we have to be realistic. Won't ourselves. they even abuse it if you if they allow that to be? Won't it be like whoever is not for us is against us? Obviously, it will always come to that. A Ford, mm. uh, one of the American inv yeah, yeah. inventors, at the point, the authority in the United States questioned his ability to run his organization, mm. and they invited him for questioning. Right. And he asked if he could bring his team along, which he did. Mm -hmm. Along the line, when he's asked the question he couldn't answer, he would ask someone in the team. Mm -hmm. And each person gave him the right answer. Right. And Ford was able to establish that even if you are unschooled, even if you are not civilized, yes. you can still run a multinational organization if you have a good team. Yeah, sure. so what if the shepherd, of, of course, if he's not schooled, if he's not educated, but he has a good team, don't you think sky will be no limit? Yes, sky will be a no limit. It's just that going back to about Heistin as well. He so said, you want your baby to be intelligent with the baby fairy tale. You want the baby to be more intelligent than read more fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Now, if we start from the congregation, just the new convert, mm. and we start up with a training exercise, by the time they get to the position of elder, don't forget they are coming from somewhere with their skills. Mm. By the time they understand the, the canal doctrine, skill. the canal skill, mm. by the time they understand the doctrine, they will apply mm. their canal skill. Mm. There should be tolerance. Obviously. There should be a kind of like integration. Exactly. There should be a forum to understand, to evaluate the the value of the congregation, sure. the quality of the congregation. Sure. Then that you was see how what Hannah Ford said. did, mm. bringing up the team. Mm. Because he understood that, okay, 
my team I have various people mm. that are good in different departments. So by the time it becomes a team, they will cover every element of life. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So uh, this is what the sh this is your advice to the shepherds yeah. now that they should look beyond what they think they know. Sure. They shouldn't just impose their idea mm -mm. on the church. No. They should move from uh, being autocratic. Yeah. Into being more democratic. Exactly. That is your advice. That is my Viewers, advice. are we not lucky to have this man on the show? On this note, I want to say a big thank you for uh, coming on. Oh, thank you. And um, we hope any other time we invite you, you will not hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. Like, we will keep praying and we know out of no time the Lord will help us to have some and make you have a, a, a time for us. Right. On this note, I also thank you for being here, Evangelist Solution Kade. And um, 